fuck you, golems. We're about to fuck your shit up. It's like, I'm gonna get drunk on this sauce, and I'm gonna try to hit up hook up with this girl. God damn it. I cannot think. What is wrong with me today? Maybe I need to go eat something. I don't know. You are just a ball of dark abyss right now. Wow, that dude's kind of a dick. Where do you go to the gym? Oh my god. That sounds scarring. Hello everyone, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. I'm your host CJ, here with me are Roberto. Hey. And Clucker. Hey, what's going on? Unfortunately, Dan was busy, so he's not going to be joining us, and I couldn't get a replacement in the short period of time. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go along with the three of us here. So um, yeah, what this podcast is um, essentially functions like a book club for anime and manga, where we recommend stuff, we take turns reading down the list, and we talk about it. Uh, one thing that comes with that is there's a huge spoiler warning with um, pretty much anything on this show and anything that's not going to be one of the main topics because we can kind of go off on tangents sometimes and talk about things without really thinking about it because there's a lot of stuff we've watched together and we kind of just openly talk about it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go over the agenda. The first things we're going to be talking about are our um, anime for this week is Rumbling Hearts along with um, Volume 7 of Lucifer and the Hammer, which are chapters 42 through 47. Then we're going to go on from there and talk about other anime we've been watching or manga we've been reading, and then we're going to talk about our random topic of the day, which today is going to be an anime series that you watched and liked, but then when you watched it again, it, didn't, it wasn't as good, didn't hold up, or it could be the other way around where there's one you didn't like and you watched it again and it ended up being fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and go straight into the anime here. We'll go ahead and get Roberto to give us a quick little description since this is um, one of his recommendations. Sure. Uh, Rumbling Hearts is the story of these four high school friends, two guys and two girls, where one of the girls actually has a crush on the on the main guy, but so does the other girl, but you kind of see one's the kind of shy, quiet one, the other one's the more outgoing type. Well, the, more, the quiet one's the one that has the crush, and the outgoing one, she decides to help her friend out by kind of hooking them up together, and, you know, they start dating, and things are going well, until something uh, pretty bad happens. And then the story kind of takes off from there. Yeah, you kind of kind of miss the most important part there, since uh, this is, this is going to be the huge spoiler for this one, uh, one of the first huge spoilers anyway. So if you don't want to, if you're not planning on watching this, I would shy away now. But um, yeah, she ends up getting hit by a car and she's in a coma for three years, and then time skips ahead, and that's where the story yep. actually starts. Because the first like episode or two are all build up to that. Pretty much, it was. Very depressing when I saw that happen. I was very sad. I I do want to make, I guess it would be, it's either going to be like a correction or retraction of previous statements that I've made, though, which are, I like anime and manga and stories that are essentially can be boiled down to pretty much being soap operas. No, this fucking <laughs> anime nope. is, Didn't my God, I could not handle it. I forgot what, like, an actual soap opera was till I was watching this, and I was like, oh, sweet Jesus, why? Why, Roberto? <laughs> <sighs> it, was, it was pretty tough to get through it all. It was very, very saddening at times, and then, at, and then it was very... Even sometimes when it just, like... I don't know. Like, this, this whole anime can be summed up in one simple thing, is people are fucking stupid in this anime. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's the yes. biggest problem. Yes, Ugh. I definitely agree with that statement. My god. I mean, soap operas, man. It's all about dumb people. Dumb people doing dumb things that cause a bunch of drama. That's true. And that is, that is really That's... everything that happened in this. It's <laughs> all about that drama, bro. That's how soap operas become popular. It's all about that drama. Yeah. So, but yeah, the series, um, in general, as like, if you take it as a drama, it's actually a very good drama series um from what i from from what i can tell and from what i like from what i saw i enjoyed parts of it that were drama but drama's not my complete cup of tea so it's hard for me to be like yeah gun ho yeah drama well i, um, I kind of got the opposite out of it because i'm usually all over that shit like drama romance stuff i fucking love it but man there's just something about this one there was so many times i was like no don't fucking say that. Say this. Everything will be okay. It's like, <laughs> just, nope. just fucking tell her, man. Tell her it's three years in the future. Don't fucking pretend like it's not. Ah. 
so many things like that are just uh, I guess to give a little bit of a, a little more into the summary here and everything of why like about the the three years thing and everything um whenever the girl finally does wake up from the coma she doesn't I mean obviously because she's been asleep for three years she doesn't know that she has been asleep for three years and for some reason the doctor thinks it's a good idea to be like hey we're not going to tell her it's been three years everybody should pretend like nothing happened and they do this for months like just months and it's like no (laughs) because there's a lot of stuff that happened while she was uh in a coma like the outgoing girl roberto mentioned earlier ended up actually getting with the main guy because she always liked him anyway and she like kind of helped him get out of being super depressed and everything yeah she kind of threw her herself at him literally yeah yeah and yeah so they're they're together for i think two of the three years the second two years right yeah yeah. He was still pretty, like, broken up about it in the first year. Yeah. How, how'd you uh, take all that, Clicker? Like, seeing all that? Because I remember it was, I think it was a flashback towards the end of it and everything, seeing all that. Seeing what, the guy hook up with the other girl? Well, the whole process of him essentially grieving and all that the whole time, and then hooking up with her, and then that starting everything. Yeah, I, I thought it was actually extremely interesting. I enjoyed it. But I hated it as a, as, as, in general, I hated it because I didn't want him to be with that. Like, I enjoyed the very beginning series, I enjoyed the first girl, and then that shit happened to her, and I was extremely sad. And then he got with that girl, and I was like, I, I can't li- like, I understand why, but I can't like this. What, what was your reaction whenever, like, the, the scene actually happened? It's like, oh god, she's in a coma now. I was I was completely distraught. It was so remember in Clanad when you like thought Ushio died and your heart just was like no. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what where I was at. I imagine you actually did that out loud at that part. I was I was pretty pretty like <laughs> the the thing is I was actually kind of forewarned about this series because Aww. one of one of our friends named Seth told me about it. Uh, and <laughs> and I I kind of knew it was coming, but I still it still hit me hard. Like it still hit me just as hard. And you I see, was just like, I had no idea. I literally yeah. knew nothing about this. I thought it was a completely different series. Whenever I told Roberta it was on my list, this was not actually on my list. This is completely oh. different. I had no idea about this what show. What did <laughs> what was on your list that then? I think it was like School Rumble or something like that. Uh, that okay, was similar that's name. another one uh, Roberto's watched and I haven't watched. That's really and... good. Yeah. See, I, th- I thought it was that one or something like that where I kind of knew what it was, but I forgot the name because it's been on my list so long. It's because it's kind of just on the lower list. So whenever I watched this, I was like, this is nothing like what I thought this was going to be. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 so I was like, oh, it's a completely different anime. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think the thing that pissed me off the most about this show was the end, though. Yeah, me too. Such yeah, bullshit. I really didn't like the ending, but... Just no closure, man. They just open up everybody's ending, pretty much, and it's just like, take a guess what happened. It's like, yeah. fuck you. It did that, It did that kind of, like, almost typical harem ending, where it's like, no, he doesn't, nothing, like, he doesn't choose, you don't really get any closure, yeah. They were almost happen. there. They were, were so close. Because he... Because... I mean, we're we're probably gonna be skipping all around between like the middle and the end of this, but like that end, they they finally solved everything at the end with the girls and all that. And he picked one, and he told her he loved her and all that, and it seemed like they were gonna be together and get married and everything. Then it was like what five years later or two years later, it was some number of years later, and you see all four of the main characters, but you have no idea if they even know each other or talk to each other anymore. Yeah. And it's just like the fuck happened in those years why did you even put that there it would have had a good closure happy or not well not a happy ending but it would have had a good ending otherwise yeah them throwing that in there i was just like why but... so, i mean it's it's not like they could have really built this up for another season or anything there, there wasn't enough real content left i guess they could have done some stuff with it but it wouldn't have been the same but like there, there was definitely no reason to throw something like that at the end yeah i agree with that yeah. I don't know. So, excuse what what do you um what do you think about some of the characters, Clicker? Um, as as I mentioned, I really liked the first girl. Um, and then the second girl, I just I don't know what was about her. I just couldn't. I couldn't. Who get, are I first guess... and second girl, Clicker? <laughs> was it 
I mean, if you don't want to say the names, you could say Coma Girl and not Coma Girl. I mean, okay, there, I'll do that. <laughs> coma Girl and not Coma Girl, because I can't remember that just names. Sounds right worse. Now. <laughs> exactly. But at least people can understand <laughs> what the hell he's saying. Okay, Suzumi is the the quiet one, and Hayas is the the outgoing one. Okay, then uh, you said Suzumi, and what else? What was the other one? Hayase. Hayase. Yes. Hayase. Right. Or their well, other names are Haruka and Mitsuki as well, which were probably what you heard the most. Haruka and Mi- Mitsuki. Haruka was the shy one, right? Yes. Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I liked Haruka because, like, it was it was cool to see like her finally kind of get this guy that she'd been wanting to date for a while, and it was cool. And then that shit happened, and I was sad. And then I couldn't I couldn't forgive Mitsuki because like. I don't know, like, she, she knew, like, what it meant to, like, what he meant to Haruka, and she just did it anyways, and I don't know, I just, I couldn't accept it. I kind of, at times I didn't like the shy nature of, um, Haruka, and I liked, um, Mitsuki's, um, more outgoing nature at times, but... I enjoyed the fact that Haruka in the beginning like got this got this person even though she was so shy and she was she was super happy about it and then like just tumbling pillar of depressing. So <laughs> You know who my favorite character was? Who? who? Fucking blonde waitress. She was great. Uh, <laughs> she was that, great. That's it. <laughs> not even, not even a name. Just a blonde waitress. Well, it's, sure, her name's never really mentioned or anything, but it's uh, Daikuji Ayu. And yep. uh, oh. yeah, she she was just fucking great. She was a hilarious, awesome character. Like I don't know. It's not because I like Sundae's or anything. That's not the reason I like uh, her. Of sure? course not. Of Are course you not. Sure? It's not because she's more extreme than what I normally like. Because I, I, I didn't what? like her like I usually like the soon days and everything. I just found her the most interesting and, like, fun character. She was, like, the scenes with her were some of the most interesting scenes in the whole anime to me. Which definitely felt out of place still with this anime, because it, I don't know. The, the comedy being in there and everything didn't fit with the anime to me. Yeah, I agree with that. There was a lot of comedy in there that I was like, mm, Yeah. It's a little bit more serious than this. Yeah. She was great, though. I liked her a lot. I was hoping he'd end up going after her at the end and ditch both of the first <laughs> girls. I would have been so happy. Either that, or I was really hoping for, like, I even actually talked to my roommate Steven about this a few times. Like, because he, he came through there as I was watching it a few times, I was like, Steven, why am I watching this? <laughs> and just, like, I, I, I don't know. Greeting. It was hard for me to watch. And I, I ended up telling him several times, I was like, I really, really want the train wreck ending for this. I will be <laughs> so happy. That's terrible! Why would you want the train wreck ending? Because everybody was so fucking stupid in this anime. They did stupid shit all the time. Yeah. They caused problems. Fair enough. And then stupid shit, because of that, they caused more problems. And it's just like, no, stop doing that. Like, I was hoping, like, this, this is actually pretty bad, but w- what did I think? I had, like, a whole scenario that would have made me happy. Oh my god, been... you created the scenario? <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible, trust me. This is probably the worst, the worst ending you could probably have with something like this without going down, like, the school days route. God, I was just but, about uh, to mention that no, series. I was like, not that. I didn't think that bad, but like one thing I was hoping because I think this is around whenever uh, Haruko went actually back into a coma. I was like, she just fucking stay there, never wake up again. Have the <laughs> other girl get fired from her job, really sad, end up moving away and everything, and the main guy just sit there, sad and depressed again, and everything will be great. That's <laughs> like, terrible. So, so <laughs> That's I kind of had a similar thought to that. Like, when he kind of finally said goodbye to Haruka, I was expecting him to go to that, that place they always go to and just find nobody, and he was just alone for the rest of his yes. life. Yes, whenever I saw that, that's what I was really hoping, is yeah. neither of them be there, the other girl already yeah. be, like, moved away and shit. Yeah. And, oh, God, I would have been so happy. I would have been so happy. I was hoping for that ending. I think this is the first time I've heard someone wish for a bad ending. People are so fucking stupid in this anime. Like, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> That's why it was hard for me to watch it, because it was like, I'm fine with a lot of drama. Even some misunderstandings, cool, whatever. People do stupid things sometimes. But every single thing like people did in this is just like, no, you should not be doing that. You should not be saying that. Why are you doing this? You know this will just ruin everything. Oh, did it anyway. Cool. 
Because it, it definitely CJ, looked like it was going towards just, a train wreck. People just don't understand. That's, no, that's some people do. Fucking My Love Story has the perfect character that every, like, romance and drama needs, which is fucking Suna. He will just solve everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Just be like, no, she likes you. Go talk to her. It's just like, oh, uh, oh okay, cool, everything's resolved. <laughs> I don't know. Can this... you really say the interest? The story is interesting at that point. I've been loving the hell out of my love story. It's great, and he's done that multiple times. Like there, there are all these stereotypical things that keep happening that are like, oh god, they're gonna do this thing that always happens. Oh, he he kept that from happening. He made everything. Oh, cool, everything's fine, and it was still interesting as hell. Like it's it's still been very funny, very good. I mean, obviously, it would not work for this type of story. This story would be an episode long, otherwise. But um, just throwing more and more drama in there just for the sake of drama doesn't make a good story. I agree with that. That's why this one's kind of low ranking for me. Like, What's the ranking? I'm still debating. Mm. It's somewhere around probably a 4 or 5. Really? I was going to give it a 6. I'm leaning more towards the 4. And again, if they, I'm, okay. if I'm they pretty had graceful just... on my, like, judging... I was going to give it a six-ish till they threw in that last, like, two-minute thing where it's just like, a few years later, you don't know what the fuck happened. You don't know if they know each other. You don't know who's together anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That ruined everything for me. I was like, nope, nope, getting the shitty I can, I can see that. I can see that ruining a lot. Yeah. At least it, did, uh... it did ruin some for me, too. So, yeah. just out of curiosity, what is your ranking on this series, uh, Roberto? Uh, I actually gave it a seven. Okay, I could I, I really... could definitely see that because I can there there are just certain things that annoy me too much. Right, I did enjoy it because I felt like it did cover a lot of themes that a lot of other stories don't. Well, this kind of goes back into um, some of my favorite uh, manga series because they run into similar issues like this, um, which is like the Suzuka, Kimi no Machi and all that. They run into a lot of similar issues to this, but I feel it flows a lot better and it's handled better in the story to me. So I don't right. Know. I guess because I don't really want to call other other stories immature, just because they're focused around high school life and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I felt like this story was a little more different, and seeing as they were adults and you know they were actually out in the world, and it wasn't just like <laughs> that happy, made me actually judge the people harsher because it's like, bro, they're you're like fucking twenty. You should be smarter than this. <laughs> what the fuck? True. <sighs> but the even, only even one that wasn't are, what. Even people that age are stupid sometimes. Yeah. The other one that wasn't stupid, and actually kind of just, I could actually see all the actions he didn't, I can understand why he did everything, was Shinji. The the fourth friend? Yeah. Even though, like, he slept with Mitsuki and everything, whenever he shouldn't have, probably, that probably screwed up friendship stuff or whatever, but, I don't know. I I wouldn't say all his actions are justifiable, but I understand why he did everything, and he actually made logical decisions on everything. Even if they weren't the right decisions, still, he actually, it made sense everything he did. Right. It's it's kind of too bad that he disappeared for a while. It's just like where did he go? Yeah. And then he kind of comes back as like this like a big turning point or something. Yeah. I was hoping he was gonna be the um Suna of this and just pull everything back together, but no, no. No, I, I think he kind of made things worse. Yeah, a little bit. But like I said, like I can understand everything he did. And it didn't actually affect anything for him really too much. Like it screwed up a lot of other people <laughs> and a whole bunch of other bull bullshit because of that. But. I don't know. I still think Daikuji's the best character. That's fair. Best character in this series? Yeah. It's my favorite fair character. Enough. It was probably so, partially, at least a little bit, because of the soon today. Probably a little bit. It was the probably. soon today. Probably. Just like, if there was a Yan today in this series, it would have been my favorite, probably. I thought whatever, like, Mitsuki was breaking down and stuff, I thought she was about to start going down that route. I was like, <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Oh, I got very vengeful towards the end of this anime. <laughs> I wanted a lot of terrible things to happen. I don't know, I was kind of done with Mitsuki pretty early on. I'm just like, what are you doing? Stop this. Stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely understand that. I, I kind of felt like that a little bit with her. But just from the very beginning, I never liked Tadaka. At least to like the end, she got where she was stronger and everything. It's like, oh, she's actually a halfway decent character now. Cool. Yeah, I I um I was happy. How she how she developed. That's mainly why I like Taraka over Mitsuki, is just 
she I felt like she became more developed than Mitsuki. Mitsuki kind of was just there at times. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this. I'm kind of done. You guys got any other comments, questions, anything? Nope. Uh, yes. Yeah, going back to like the day of the accident, do you th- do you kind of blame Mitsuki for that? Because she kind of knew that he was going to the date, and she stopped him anyway to. Well, that kind of that's like kind of one of the big plot points is both of them yeah. think that they're the reason because he stopped whenever she talked to him, but she's the one who stopped him, and so on and so forth. But because right. it's a drama, I'm kind of just like that probably would have happened anyway. You know, whatever. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I I find that interesting, and I've actually thought about that already, and I don't know if I would have blamed either of them. I mean, it it is kind of their fault. I just, I look at it as it's a very unfortunate event that happened. Um, That's how I look at it. Yeah, if they weren't there at that one point in time, this never would have happened, but... Also, if the car never fucking, like, flew off the road, then stuff wouldn't have happened either way. So, I don't know. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, there are a lot of possibilities, too. Like, he could have showed up just as the car hit, and he could have been in the accident, too, or could have witnessed it, which could have been worse. Yeah. It could have easily been worse. That much is true. Or better. Or better, yeah. (laughs) Maybe he got there in time and nothing happened. Or both of them get there, both of them get crushed in credits. Credits. <laughs> Man, CJ, you are just a ball of dark abyss right now. I'm, I'm just very bitter towards this series. It just rubbed me the wrong way with a lot of different things. Clearly. Like, uh. Alright, anyway, let's move on to yeah. something I actually enjoyed, which was Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume <laughs> 7. You were one of the best arcs ever. Yeah. So, my first question for you, is that Eleven-Eyed Golem? What do you think of him? Eleven-Eyed was the transforming one, right? Yes. He's interesting. Very interesting, because it, it gives so much more of a, a layer of depth to the golems, where this one's actually, like, it's very intelligent, it actually talks to people, and hell, it even goes to go fuck with some of them sometimes, pretending to be some of the dead people. It's like, wow, that dude's kind of a dick. Yep, he has... The thing that I really like about him is he has a personality. So yeah. they establish a personality with him, and he wants to, he wants knowledge. He wants to learn more about the world, which is why he like transforms into like a human and like walks among the humans just so he can see what the world is like, and that's really cool. Um, so I really liked that aspect of him. Uh, let's see. Um, what was the last thing that happened? Like, what was the last thing you remember? Things. I uh, hold on. Yeah, things <laughs> happened. Things happened. I read it all in one to... go earlier, so it's like... I, I'm just trying to get a gauge of... Yeah. Um... Just a second, I'm, I'm pulling it up now. Alright. It was probably the best volume I've read so far, though, I'll go ahead and say that. Yeah, this is one of the best volumes in the series. Oh, um... this is the one where, like, they, they defeat the ten, and the fucking eleven turns into a magical girl. The <laughs> Owl Knight uh... decides to actually kill the last part of the 10 and fully defeat the 10th golem and turns into like the fucking magical bird thing whatever i forgot the name of it becomes one of the knights special knights the mystical ones or whatever mythical there we go yeah so yeah that's that's the last thing that happened all right all right all right so you actually haven't gotten to see um the what happens to the 11 eyed golem all right um have you seen uh, the eleven-eyed golem like come face to face with uh with um with the cat knight. Don't think so. Okay, because those two have a couple really cool interactions with each other, but I guess you haven't ran into that yet. So, all right. I do remember how... the cat knight having like a fucking mech thing that he's piloting as one of his golems. That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. was like laughing maniacally and stuff. It was great. <laughs> Yeah. He has, he has, he has probably the best might power of them all. Like his power is just like, it's just creativity. Go. Well, it's just so interesting the way he was just like he. I don't know. He he has a very deep personality. I guess like he's usually all calm and collected, and he's reading all the time, wanting all this knowledge. And then you see him on the mic thing, just laughing maniacally while destroying like the ten-eyed golems and everything. Like yeah, 
I don't know. He's he's a very interesting character. He is. And his his uh his animal from yours is fucking adorable. So there's that. Yep. Um. So I'm pretty sure in this volume, the holes that uh Huey dug actually came to be useful. Several times for other people. Then finally, at the the end of the volume, they actually trapped a lot of the ten eyed golems. Yep. Which was it? Like I, I was, I was really happy that they they gave that a use. Like it actually became useful. We've been building like, that for how many ch- like volumes now? But they could have like the 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 they could have easily not made it a thing, but they did. Yeah, that, that would have been like such happy. bullshit because they're like like it's been at least three or four volumes. He's been doing that stuff. <laughs> it's true. Uh. Um. What happened with the princess in this one? I don't think much. Um, she finally actually starts getting her strength back and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. Alright, so she finally gets strength back. Let me see other things that happened. Try to oh, remember. Oh, yeah, the fucking... The invisible knight appeared and all that, too. That oh, was cool. yeah! Because she finally got, like, super awesome then. Oh, my yeah. God, I was so sad whenever the fucking mouse knight died. Um, I think that it was, was mouse night. that was in volume six, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. I just that read that today, six. though. Oh, okay. okay. So you read volume six and yeah. seven, and it okay. gave a lot, a lot more understanding to all the shit she was going through and her going crazy and like so many things with her. Like it gave her, like whatever she just fucking destroyed the nine eyed golem. I was like, holy fuck, yes. Yeah, she dude. Was yeah. Awesome. She was she was fucking badass against that nine eyed golem, and it was. It was really cool between the interaction between her and the Eleven-Eyed Golem, because, like, the Eleven-Eyed Golem tries to fuck with her, and she's just like, Immediately, uh, like, you're not you. him. You what look nothing fuck? like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The Mouse Knight, like, hit me really hard, because, like, they, like, they did so much with him and built him up so much right before the death, and it was just like, oh, he's so cool. And then it was just, oh, 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 shit. That sucks. Mm-hmm. That's to the point where it even affects the Owl Knight. Like, nothing fucking affected yeah. him before that. Yep. And I really enjoyed that the next fight they did, they were all in funeral outfits. Like, yeah. just as, like, in contribution to him. Like, they were just like, yeah, we're all going to, like, dress up in funeral outfits because fuck you, Golems, we're about to fuck your shit up. Yep. Yeah, they gave, so. uh, they gave, oh god fucking what's her name grasshopper night girl mantis night there it is mantis yeah. night girl forgot her name but it gave her so much more of like that outfit actually gave it so much more of a impact whenever she did wreck the nine on a nine eyed golem yeah yep 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 um lots of feels this chapter lots of feels that's yeah the the feels were very strong so i'm surprised uh, i thought i thought this volume was the volume that the eleven night golem stuff but i guess not um he just talks with people and learns knowledge i believe him and the owl knight had a couple cool interactions um a little bit nothing because too crazy yeah it was nothing like insane but it like the the owl knight like because he's i guess he's buddy buddy with like a magician and everything like that he was able to just like talk with the 11 eyed golem and the 11 eyed golem like he bring, I think he brings in books and stuff like that, and the Eleven-Eyed Golem just constantly is reading and stuff like that. It's the Eleven-Eyed Golem is my favorite Golem, period, because he's just he brings so much more depth to the Golems. Well, yeah, he's he's a much more interesting character. Like he he actually is a character. The rest of them were plot devices. Yes. Where this one actually is a character now, and he he has his own thoughts and feelings and everything. Like I don't know, he's a fully adamant creature. I think that's what he said. Something like that. Yep. Whatever. I I know English good. <laughs> I know English good. Um, but yeah. Uh, so you've been enjoying it? Yeah, I mean it's been good. It's it hasn't gone downhill from where it's been. If that's what you're asking. That's pretty much what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy to hear that it still only goes uphill. I can tell you that much because, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure the last the. I want to say the last volume is my favorite volume, mainly because right. epilogue. But still, it's a really good volume. All right, look forward to it. Um. So yeah. All right. Um. Do you have anything to add or anything, Roberto? Mm, no, I think we got it all that I could think of. 
All right, awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and move on then. <clears throat> let's go into other things we've been watching or reading throughout the week or two weeks now since we had weren't able to record last week, so we're going to have the um, weeklies and everything we do. We're going to be two weeks now instead of one, so essentially caught up on everything. Yep. Let's go ahead and get you to go first, Roberto. All righty. So I ended up watching the first Card Captor Sakura movie, and then... Uh... I read some more Suzuka over the two weeks. I'm up to about chapter 108 or 109 where she finally leaves for America. Oh, yeah. that. Yeah, so Has that so. just happened? or Yeah, like, like that's where I stopped. Like, she literally, like, he said, I love you, and she got on the plane to go to America. Like, that's where I stopped. So you, I'm really you eager get to her. see some fun drama from that. Yeah, I'm really that's, eager to get back to it. That's a place I distinctly remember uh, reading it and everything. Is there anything, um... Else that happened throughout that you wanted to talk about a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so I didn't really like the first girl he went out with, Honoka, and I was I was actually kind of hoping they would break up sooner than later, <laughs> you know, because usually I kind of root for the the two characters that do like each other and stuff. Yeah. So I always want them to to be together. So, so who was it? I forgot the the shrine girl. Yeah, I'm trying to look up the names or the the characters so I can get a face to it. Gotcha. So, uh, oh, I don't want the anime. I want the manga. Hold on. There we go. That's the manga characters. What was her name? Honoka. Because if I can just get like, if I just see her face, I'll probably remember a lot more. Uh Sakura Honoka. Yeah, her. Oh, I remember her. Okay. So you you didn't like her. Not. It's not that I didn't like her as a character. I just kind of didn't like her being her being with uh, Yamato. Well, that makes sense. I can understand it. And then let's see, what else? Oh, and then when he goes on that group date, and that girl comes in that looks exactly like Suzuka, I'm like, oh my god, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was actually Suzuka or Kimino Idumachi right now. Was there... Oh god, these are running together now. Was there a <laughs> character in Suzuka that was a biker that wanted to go, like, pro racing? No, not, at least not yet. But. Okay, he definitely would have been there. It's Kimono Yamachi then. Never mind. Yeah. I didn't spoil anything with him. It's just yeah, no, yeah. you're good. Let's see what else. So I was gonna ask about him mm -hmm. again, and it's kind of interesting how that theme park keeps being a place of of importance for the story, the fantasy land or whatever it's called. Oh yeah. I remember from the fucking early on that one chick that comes like keeps coming around with the tickets and everything, trying to get him to go there and all that. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting just how much like that one character and that place has so much meaning to the story. Yeah, what do you think of Suzuka so far though? Because I mean, for at least like the majority of at least the first half of it, she's kind of a bitch to him all the time. Yeah, that's kind of where where I'm standing at right now. But it's like. She really does have a, a sweeter side, and she does want to care about him, but I don't know what's stopping her at this point, because we've kind of already got past the part where she's kind of over that guy that died, mm -hmm. and, and you know, she she kind of accepts Yamato finally, but I feel like there's still something that's holding her back, in a yep. sense, so hopefully that gets addressed. Yeah, that's, addressed. um, things like this are a similar thing with, uh, Seo Kyoji's work, so people not being able to let go of certain events in their past. So. Right. I'm sure you're running into at least another one of those in Suzuka and a few in Kimono Dumachi as well. But yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> I will. How have you been as far as... Because uh, I know it's not too bad, at least for the majority of Suzuka isn't bad about it typically, but uh, how have you been with the, the feels that they try to pull out of you? Because you do uh, see the main guy struggle and get just super depressed sometimes and all yeah. that. Like I'm, I'm kind of starting to get to those feels right now. Because it's like, he clearly doesn't want to give up on her and you know it's just kind of like bad thing after bad thing you know yep. i mean just look at everything so. he's already gone through to try to yeah. get her man it's like mm -hmm. fuck most people would have given up fucking right months ago years ago even if it's that long i don't remember the yeah. time frame okay yeah, he didn't even give a shit about track honestly yeah and he becomes kinda... like one of the fucking i think he was up there as like one of the stars and everything for the team wasn't he yeah because his running time was pretty good yeah so yeah, I'm glad you've been enjoying. It. I'm glad you yeah. finally finally started that series. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got anything else to add to that, or any other series you've been watching, Let's reading see. as well? Uh, Domestic Nakanojo. Uh that last chapter, fifty-one. 
uh, was it 51 that I last watched or read? It's when uh, Al starts getting kind of adventurous, we could say. I think that's the last one I saw. I remember how, the, how it ended very distinctively with like the door closing and all that, and you mm-hmm. don't know what's about to happen. Uh, um, yeah, that, I am not okay with Al right now. <laughs> no, no, oh my god. I I really hope they don't go down that route. I really hope they don't. It will just ruin so many things. Like it would, honestly. I don't know. Uh, but, but this the... is definitely like this is a big contrast to uh, Rumbling Hearts to me because this one actually does drama right. Like at least more right to me anyway. Where people do some stupid things, but there's like a reasoning for it typically. Right. Except Al. I'll just be in a fucking dick right now. Yeah, it's like Al made I'm gonna a terrible get, decision. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna get drunk on this sauce and I'm gonna try to hit up hook up with this girl. Uh, but word on the streets that the translator actually dropped this series. Well, so. I know there's at least one more chapter or something like that. But he is like either he t- he took a week off, I believe, and I think he said he's gonna make it up in, like this coming week with two chapters. But I'm not sure. I might be reading a different translation then. So I've I've heard a couple of different things. Okay. But, I don't know, I know we missed out on a chapter this week anyway, so far. But yeah, I'm really excited to where that's going. I'm not excited to where that's going right now. Well, excited <laughs> in the sense that, like, I don't want things bad to happen. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I need to know what very, happens. It's it's a very intriguing story. I definitely I need to know what happens, but God, I hope it's not what I think it's about. Right. Happen. Yeah. And then, I guess, other than that... Oh, you watched uh, Ori Monogatari, right? Yep. All right. What happened in that last uh fucking thing episode? There we go. Yeah. I can uh, think today. Uh, the main guy found out that Suna's dad was was in the hospital. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he was kind of conflicted on whether going to his girlfriend's birthday or going to the hospital to see Suna's dad because he's always yeah. been really cool with him. Yeah, it shows just how like devoted Suna is to being um fucking main dude's friend god damn it i'm forgetting everything today <laughs> it's not my fault i promise i don't know why what the hell is the fucking guy's name taco taco yes yeah fucking taco like it shows just how devoted to taco like Suna is as a friend and everything even though he's going through all this stuff he knows it won't really do anything or help really with uh taco being there i mean being here for support would obviously help a little bit but it wouldn't do as much as knowing that he's off being happy with his girlfriend and everything. And he's he, he's definitely someone, even from early on it showed, he's definitely someone who will much rather do like self-sacrifice stuff than watch people like hurt his friend or, or hurt Takeo or talk bad behind his back or whatever. Yeah. Like like I said, Suna is the guy, like the, the, the best friend that every like guy in a romance story needs. <laughs> Yeah, he's an awesome not... dude, super loyal and everything, and he's like, "Stop being stupid, do this instead." <laughs> yeah, he needs to replace the the very stereotypical pervy best friend. Yeah, he helps cool. tremendously. I do, I do love how. Um... Oh, where was I going with that? I don't know. Where God damn going it! With that? I cannot think. What is wrong with me today? <laughs> Maybe I need to go eat something. I don't know. Anyway. I can't remember what I was gonna say, so I don't really have anything else for that. <laughs> I do want to say it was really funny that Takio got a job at a gay bar. He didn't realize oh, what yeah, he was doing. I forgot about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's he's pretty much walking around with like fucking cut off jeans that are like barely covering his ass and like yeah. a, a fucking tank top, and he's like super enthusiastic about it too because I yeah. guess he doesn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, because all the guys are like, where do you go to the gym? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. Like, one of them opens the door, it's like, oh my god, he's perfect. And all that, and it's just like, wow. That sounds scarring. Nowhere near as scarring as the fucking saran wrap scene. Yeah. Uh, that, that episode I, I, before I, the I, end. I, I, I'm oh good. God. I don't want to know. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. God. <laughs> Something even Suda didn't want to do for his best yeah. friend. Ugh. I'll let your mind wander with that, Clicker. I, yeah. I, it's I'm sure it'll be worse wander. than what actually happened. Yeah. So we'll just let it wander. Uh, Alright, um... So do you have anything else, Roberto? Uh, I think that about cover it. covers it, yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to you, Clicker. Alright, so I mainly watched High School DxD. I watched, um... The new season of, um... 
or started watching the new season of, um, I know CJ watches this, I'm pretty sure Roberto doesn't watch this at all, or CJ used to watch this, I don't know if you still watch it. I started watching the new season of MLP, um, I have and then no while. I also was trying to catch up with JoJo, but I'm still very far from that, but I can't talk about JoJo because I want CJ to watch the third season, so. I gotta watch the second season first. I know. <laughs> Let's uh let's back up a little bit and talk about High School DxD a little bit cuz holy Spirit. shit that last episode man my it god finally it all makes sense now the DxD it makes sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not just about boobs it oh no not. it's still just about boobs technically oh yeah it kind but, of is but but now but, it makes sense i just love that one phrase where usually no one ever hears um what is he drag drag uh the, the dragon yeah yeah, yeah, Drake. Drake. Oh, Drake. I was just gonna call him Drake, but um, yeah. You just hear him like talk to Rius and just like, you need to leave now or you're gonna die too. <laughs> and it's just like, holy shit, something bad is about to go down. <laughs> like whenever a fucking like a dragon that lives in somebody's just like, okay, you know how you're one of the people that this this guy cares about the most in the world. You need to leave or he's gonna kill you. <laughs> just like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. And he just turns into a goddamn dragon. Like, a literal dragon, and not just a dragon armor. Pretty much. Yeah, that, that shit was crazy. I was yeah. not expecting that. Um, I, at the end of seventh episode, I was extremely worried, and I didn't know what was going to happen. And I had an inkling suspicion it would happen, but I didn't know it'd be to this extreme. To the extreme where, like... The dragon itself would be like, all right, Rhea, sorry, you know, <laughs> you can't get near him right now. Yeah. Still have the balls to do it, though. He's still yeah, right in there anyway. That's why yeah. I like Rhea. Yep. Still Kaneko's best girl, though, still. I don't know, Rhea. Rhea's right there. Dude, those fucking just... ears and that tail. My uh, God. Um, I don't know. But uh, episode, um, episode 7, a thing that happened in episode 7 that was absolutely hilarious. Um, was when he read their movements by reading their boobs. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like... I actually watched seven through nine today before we started. I don't know how I forgot about that. You know, each week I'm like, they can't talk themselves, and then fucking talking to boobs is a thing. <laughs> he, he literally yep. called himself boob-lingual. It's like, boob-lingual. What the fuck? It's like, yep. Oh they my went god, there. I did not think I. I I don't know what to think about this show anymore because I was like you, I was like they can't possibly top that, and they just do every time. And it's like I I don't know what to think anymore. It's like this show pretty... is making me question my reality. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. I the more I watch this show, the more I'm like, yeah, this show is just absolutely fantastic. Like, well, yeah, it's like we I... talked about before though. It's because it embraces that it is nothing but like a fucking etchy show. Really, I mean, it has a good story and everything, but. It's all based off of the edgy. <laughs> it's true. Like that is what it is at the core, and they they yeah. embraced it. Yeah, even like so, Rius and also Akano in episode seven got buffed from Echi because Issei was like, you know what? I'll go on a date with you, Akano, if you wipe out those enemies. And she was just like, hell yeah! Made sure it like, was loud enough where Rius got to hear it as well, and she was like, oh hell no. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fantastic. I love the fucking bitch right after that, where they were fighting. I think it was the queen or whatever. She was like, hey, don't don't ignore me and argue about some guy. And they were both like, shut up and like, just destroyed her. <laughs> yeah, dude, they didn't they didn't uh, give any fucks about her. Man, it's so good. It's, uh, it's such a fantastic series. Like, every episode I watch, I'm just like, yep, yep. This yeah, is... it's, it's one series I thought could never be near as good as it is. Mainly because, like I said, they just embrace what it is and just play off of it so well. Alright, um, yeah, I don't really think I have anything else to add to that except fucking Issei could be a badass and turn into a goddamn dragon. Yeah, dude, fucking, if you didn't think Issei was badass just with Balance Breaker, fucking, I'm a dragon, motherfucker! Yeah, we, we just have a fucking episode where he literally goes, Balance Breaker whoops some ass, comes out of it, and then the next episode he's like, well... Time to time to just fucking one up himself even more. It's like I, I've actually been waiting on this though because I've been curious when they were gonna do it because 
we've seen him do the balance breaker and all that. We've seen him do it in past series as well, and that was like the big thing at the end of, or one of the big things at the end of season two, was yeah. him using that to steal Vali's power for the divide and everything. Yeah. I was like, how are they going to top this now? How are they going to make him more badass? And it's just like, well, just turn him into a real dragon. <laughs> it's like, cool. What was the thing called, like, Judgment Drive or something like that? Yeah, <laughs> Juggernaut. Was Judgment, Juggernaut, Juggernaut Drive, Drive Juggernaut. which is a very suiting name for that. Yes. Like. <laughs> so, so I was, I was like, really happy that he could do that, and then Vali showed up and he was like, yeah, I've been able to do that for a long time already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was that was kind of funny, but um, yeah, that was one thing. I was just like, I saw him getting like powered up, just walking over to that guy and everything, and then the fucking explosion of him transforming sends the fucking dude flying through the air. Yeah, he's supposed to be like one of the highest class demons in like the fucking underworld or something. Mm-hmm. And one uh, of them, he's not that high, but he's still he's, pretty damn high though. He is still pretty damn high, but. He was, like, I was expecting some, like, actually something out of that guy, but no. That guy was just fucking chump change. Yeah. Like, literally, he was just, like, a stepping stone for Issei to become a dragon. That was it. Yeah, if if he had <laughs> just stayed in regular balance breaker mode, I think it would have been a little bit of a fight, but not a whole lot. And then he just went way overkill for what he needed to do. <laughs> literally yeah, turned into I a mean... rampaging dragon, destroyed him in, like, just... A minute or two. The dude didn't even touch him. Like, my god. I cannot wait till he can do that at will and he can control it. Uh, it's gonna be really hard for him to control that, I feel like. He had, he literally, he had to be, like, in an emotional, like, destroyed state for that to happen. Hey, man, he had to get something like that to get into Balance Breaker, too. Now he can do that. No, anymore. to get Balance Breaker, he just needed to fucking touch Risei's boobs. Hey, that is a very <laughs> profound emotional thing for him. Don't judge you. Right. Come on. Fair, fair, fair enough. That is true. <laughs> All right. To be honest, in episode seven, I was surprised he could even fight against literally the like, th- like ten girls that were just nothing but naked. Well, dude, he used his new power though the the boob lingual thing. That's that's true. <laughs> but uh, still. See, this is actually one thing that I didn't really realize until recently about this show is it it uses something that's usually a huge problem to me for other shows to the point where it actually is great and hilarious because of how they present everything which is the oh you give me a challenge that's harder than what I can do look at my new power that does this thing now and it just because of how they like do it and how it's usually hilarious or super badass like when you turned into a dragon like I don't know I, I don't I don't dislike the way they do it in this one it's- yeah I can agree with that I guess, I mean, it's, I get, to the point, it's because what the power-up involves is, like, I, I want to say it's because they embrace it so much, um, yeah. but I want, I also want to say it's because, um, just, like, because all, because all of, of the power-ups, because all of the power-ups involve boobs, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. But if the power-ups were like, friendship, magic, and everything like that, it probably wouldn't be that fine, because that's already, like, that's been done, I want to say. Yeah, like, you you gotta even think about this, like, even when he turned into a dragon, with, like, uh, Juggernaut Drive and all that, it it was because Asha was gone and everything, but you gotta think it was also because Asha's boobs were gone. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) To some degree, yes. To some degree. That was something he had to have been thinking, too. That like even even I don't remember him actually showing that part, but that had to have been something that was in the back of his mind there that drove him even more like in a rage. Maybe I so. I doubt it though, but that was I. You really kinda... doubt it for Issei, really? I do. Uh, Issei oh, wow. Issei never looked at Asia like the way he did at others. He looked at her more as like a a sister or something like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's perverted enough to still like if his sister flashes him, he'll still like it because that's Issei. But when talking about like actual um like relationships, I I no Issei never probably would have gotten with Asia, in my opinion. But I'm still sad Ozzy is gone. Because god yeah. damn it. That shouldn't have happened. I still liked her as a character. Alright. Cool. So, um, yeah, you have anything else you want to discuss here? About uh, stuff you've been watching or anything? Uh, I also read uh, One Piece. It's been slow. Um, so, that's all I gotta say about that. Um, 
All right. Bleach is kind of picking up, surprisingly. Yeah. It's kind of... It's been picking up more than it has been. I mean, let's be honest now. Eh. It's been like two, two, three months and like nothing has really happened. So, um... Cool. Uh, I think you guys pretty much covered most of the stuff I've been reading or watching throughout the week. Uh, at least anime-wise, anyway, because I've actually been watching a lot of Game of Thrones recently, so... Ah, that's, that's another thing I need to watch but haven't been watching. It's it's very good. Oh, I know it's good. It's I didn't think it'd be near as good as it actually is. Oh, so in my uh in MLP they made a reference to Game of Thrones. And it was of course fantastic. They would. <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. When I saw that I was like, Oh my god, this is absolutely fantastic. Like I, I need to get caught up with that. I think the last thing I saw of that was like season two. Yeah, I mean it like it's it's not everyone's cup of tea. I just I watch it because um I a couple of my friends have really wanted me to wa- like watch it the past couple like of weeks because they're like it's so good this season's even better than last. I'm like that's hard to believe, but it's it's really good. Yeah, I mean it's a good show. I just it's it kind of fell off my radar a while ago. I've been watching The Office again. <laughs> Love that show. Nice. British or American? American. Dude, okay. Steve Carell, man, he makes that show. He really, he really did. Well, that, that, and, well, Steve Carell and then Dwight also had a hand in being really good, but Steve Carell was the main driving force of that show. Yeah. For the longest time. Alright. Anyway, so we don't get too far off topic anyway. At least, we need to at least keep the random stuff on anime, but, um, <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and move on to our random topic of the day, which is, uh, Anime series that you, like, watched and liked, but then ended up not being good when you went back and watched them, or the other way around. And, um, yeah, do do either you want to go first, or you want me to go first? I got it. Go first. Oh, wait, Roberto's got it. Seeing as we kind of just talked about it, actually, High School DxD, I didn't actually really like it at first. I was kind of just like, this is just going to be one of those super edgy shows, and they're not going to get to anything. This is the super edgy show. Yeah, and then, like, yeah, so you know what? Let me watch it again because season two's coming up, and then I ended up really enjoying it. And there was actually a story there, <laughs> so, to my surprise. How, how far did you actually make it the first time you tried it before you gave it up? I think three episodes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At that point, I was kind of like, eh, I don't think I'm gonna watch this. But then, like a year and a half later, I found myself watching it again. Yeah, you're glad you did, didn't you? Yeah, I sure am now. Like, what? What are the rating essentially? go from and to like what did it start out as because if obviously you dropped it so it'd have been bad yeah I, and i dropped it i think it was about a, a five but at least season one is a seven for me because i still feel like it's starting to get there and then like two and three have been like eights for me nice oh uh, no this season's probably gonna be um either eight or nine it's gonna be hard to hit the nine but it's a possibility it could. It, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. With they've only like there were not even halfway through the season, and like it's every time we think they can't do better, they've done better. So <laughs> like I don't know. Not even halfway. They're almost done. Yeah, they do twelve episode seasons. Oh, I thought they did um a twenty four episode seasons. No, no, yeah. that's a little bit more depressing. So I guess I'll go ahead and go on with um, one of mine here for this topic, which I actually have one that I did not really like at first till I went back and watched it again with a different mindset on it, which was actually School Days. First time I watched it, I had the complete wrong impression of what it was. I thought it was going to be a typical harem, happy thing, whatever. And oh God, was I wrong? Because no one warned me about that show. I just found that on my own. So yeah, I had to deal with that. But after that, after I ended up um, watching it, figure out what exactly it was all the way through to the end and everything, I went back and watched it again with a different mindset of it. And it actually ended up being one of the, one of the, I guess, best types of uh, harems where it was like, or one of the best of a certain type where it's like the very realistic thing of what will happen if you, if you start sleeping around and girls end up going crazy and stuff. Like, it, it shows the type of shit that can go down with this. And it's, it's, actually really good on what they tried to do with it. At least what I think they tried to do with it. Like, I forgot, have either of you actually watched it? Not yet. I have not. Alright, I'll have to make that, uh... I'll have to oh, make no. that into the next round here. Oh, no. 
Making a note of it now. <laughs> Making us watch the most depressing. It's not very depressing, actually. It's, it's just realistic. Oh god, it's 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 more fucked up than depressing by far. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, that's one I ended up actually liking significantly more after I watched it again. After I one understood what it was, and two watched a lot more anime to understand a lot of the tropes and everything like that, and actually got into it a lot more, where it made a lot more sense to me. And I'll let uh, Clicker go ahead with one of his here while I see if I can think of some others that had this or the opposite reaction to me. So, mine usually come to become, or most of the ones I can think of, are um, actually um, manga. So, one of the manga I have read um, before is called God of High School, and I originally really liked the series, right? And I was like, this is cool, this is cool. And as I kept reading, and, like, I stopped reading for a while, and then I got back into it, I just didn't like it as much. It just, I feel like it just, it didn't have the same content as it did back when I, like, super enjoyed it. What do you mean by it didn't have the same content? Um, I felt like the quality, I, I guess not the quality of it went down. I guess just when I... Read it the first time. I guess I had a different mindset, and I was I I originally was like, "Hey, this is really cool" because it was all about like this karate style and stuff like that. Um, and then like eventually the series got a little crazy, but I didn't mind it as much back then. And then I re reread it, and I was like, "I don't like this. I don't like where this <laughs> series went at all." Um, so that is one of the series I can think of. Nice. Oh, another one I actually um, can think of that was the opposite, where it was like good the first time I watched it, but I ended up not liking it the second time. Mainly just, it was because I knew how it was going to end and how shittily the anime itself ended. I haven't went back and read the manga yet, but uh, it was actually Claymore. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it's one of the ones where it's like it had a lot of build up and a lot of things that could have happened, but the ending just ruined it for me. Like, I, it was partially because I had a bias and everything going into it the second time, but I just... I don't know, it wasn't the same for me. I couldn't, I, I didn't enjoy it near as much as it did the first time. I can kind of see that with the series. Uh, I really wish that series actually ended properly. Um, but it didn't. Makes me sad. I would and recommend reading the manga, because I really, I really enjoyed it. I really yeah. should. Yeah, like like I said, I'm going to go back and watch, or read the manga eventually. I just haven't yet. Because yeah. it just actually finished recently, like a year I think wow. a year ago. Okay. You guys have probably told me it finished before, but I forgot. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to do that. It's definitely. Yeah, worth it. I will definitely have to do that too. Oh, another one. I I kind of talked about this one a little bit before we started here, but uh, another thing that kind of had this type of impact for me in both directions was Initial D, and for both reasons, it's actually because I know a lot more about cars and a lot how cars work and how like they're they're supposed to perform and their limits and everything. And that makes me both like it more, yet dislike it more at the same time. Like, um, because, like, a lot of the stuff they do, well, roughly half the stuff they do, I'd say, just, at least in the earlier stuff, it's like, yeah, you could actually do that with a car, or what the fuck's wrong with you, that's not how physics work. <laughs> and, uh, I noticed a lot more of the stuff that was just like, that, you, you can't do that, that's not how that works. And, but, like, that's kind of what detracted it from me now, and I don't like it as much because of that. But I also like it a lot more now because of all the different cars that I know now and seeing them, and it's just like, oh, okay, that's actually pretty awesome. I understand why that was like such an important, like badass car to everyone at that point, and it's it's been a lot more enjoyable because I think I'm through like third or fourth stage at this point rewatching it because I don't know. Sometimes I just need some stupid fun action stuff. Uh, that's probably about all I got on this though that I can think of. Yeah, but I can't. I can't really think of another one, because usually the, most of the ones I rewatch is because I already knew I really liked them, and they turn out kind of either similar or, or just only a little bit not as enjoyable because I already know what's going to happen. Yeah, that, that's usually the way it is for me, too, but there there have been the occasional ones who's just like, what what is this? This is this is not the way I remembered it, both good or bad. So, yeah. Do you have anything else to add um, at the end here, Clucker? Nope, not really. All right, let's uh let's go ahead and wrap it up then. It's a little bit shorter than uh we have been recently, but it's you know, actually it's fine. the 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 time we should be doing it, which is an hour. Well, no, it's just so. <sighs> see Dan doing like talking about this shit before and all that. It's 
when when we originally started, we were like, okay, we want to hit at least an hour, but up to a half, well, hour and a half. So it's somewhere in that range is what we agreed on. So, oh well, doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap things up and everything. Um, so let's go ahead and go into what we're talking about next week. Um, we're actually going to be watching one of the uh, series that I recommended, which was Outbreak Company. So we're going to be watching the full series of that, which I believe is 13 episodes. Then we're also going to be talking about um, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 8, which... Hold on, let me see what the chapter list is for that. I don't remember off the top of my head. Volume 8. Do you know, Clucker? No, not off the top of my head. It's been too long. It's probably um, like 8 or 9 chapters, honestly. It's usually right. around 10 chapters, we so... If... We're going through 53. Okay. So, all the way, so 48 through 53 are the, the chapters we're going to be reading for next week on Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. And, um, yeah, then we're going to be talking about some other random topic that we're going to pick five minutes before the podcast, like we always do. Yeah, so, buddy. Uh, works for me. <laughs> Alright, let's, um, let's go ahead and go around and get you guys to tell everybody where they can find you at and everything. So, go ahead, Roberto. You can find me at RJR2992. Alright, and Clicker. All right, you can find me at Twitter at O-Klecker, O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R, or you can find me anywhere else as Bowklex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S. All right, and you can find me pretty much anywhere as Boom Coffee. Um, then you can find the podcast at uh, WordPress, or no, I said did that wrong. Let me go back. PseudoRandomPodcast.wordpress.com. Or you can find it on uh, YouTube by searching for our channel, which is uh, Pseudorandom Entertainment. And um, one thing I think we've been forgetting to actually say, because we want to, in, in case you guys have any comments or questions or uh, ideas for topics for us, animes to throw into the uh, into the random one that we do, the wild card, uh, feel free to like email us at, uh, what's what's the email, Robert? I think it's just Pseudo, pseudorandompodcast at gmail.com. All right. Cool, so yeah, send us anything um, there as far as, like, questions, comments, or anything. Just don't be a dick and put, like, a spam thing on it or whatever, because no, nobody wants to be that dick. Don't don't be that guy. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, listening in and everything, and we look forward to uh, having you listen to us discuss stuff next week without Break Company and Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, Volume 8. Thanks. All right, Bye. see you guys later. See ya.